I nearly messed this up, and I was dumb enough to capture it on videotape. But fortunately, it's all nice and clean again, so I get a second chance. And that's because of the kind of methods I use. So important little note, uh, if you have a way to make things repairable, you're not exactly sure about your scenery methods, kind of like me, uh, give yourself a second chance. Otherwise, it gets very expensive to pull all this stuff up, or at least minorly expensive. Either way, I got a second chance on that, so maybe I can show you how to do this properly. I might even show myself. See you in a little bit. Last update, I mentioned the use of a homemade static grass applicator made from an electric fly swatter. Now there are plenty of how-tos out there on how to make one, but since I'm a regular viewer of What's Neat with Ken Patterson, I made mine following his lead, and this can be found in the July 2014 episode of his show. The only part of its construction that gave me any trouble was the wooden basket adapter, and it took me three tries to get it right. The winning combination for me was to drill the mounting holes first, check that the part fits, then trace the location of the basket end, then use a Dremel tool or a small router to cut the grooves for the basket, and then it was safe to cut the part out and sand everything to size. If I had cut the part out first, I would have never put it anywhere near a spinning tool like a router. In any case, the tool works just fine, and I found this out by nearly ruining the west end of Myrtle Place and the west sideline. Sure, the grass stood up, but it looked hideous. Luckily, I used diluted white glue mix for my scenery glue, so I was able to wet the area down, pull the track pins, and remove everything for cleaning. There were no feeders to speak of in this area, but if there were, I would simply clip them off at the main bus and remove them along with the track so that resoldering and repainting would not be an issue. Once everything was clean and dry, I relayed the track and redid the scenery with a bit more discipline. When it was time to actually add some static grass, I did so using a slightly thicker glue mix placed in targeted areas so that when dry the excess grass could be vacuumed up, leaving the intended patches of grass. I don't really have a formula for this glue mix, by the way. I just make it thick enough to avoid soaking into the scenery too quickly, but thin enough so that it won't leave a plastic-like glue layer. I want there to be visible glue when I start laying the grass so it actually has to hang out on top of the scenic layer long enough to get that going. As far as choosing colors and such, I have a few different shades of Woodland Scenics grass flock and a bit of knot grass, so I just try to make blends that feel natural to this area. It's all still very new to me and highly experimental, so fingers crossed. Another scenic element was the grade crossing at Umatilla Street. Again, I will refer you to What's Neat with Ken Patterson as I follow the method outlined in the April 2017 episode. I glued in ties with a flood of wood glue and then sanded everything down and made flangeways with small saws and files. It's worth noting that I did not move on from the flangeways until they were absolutely flawless so a locomotive could make it through without stalling and even the lightest of my cars would not be lifted out by anything. Another detail I added, if you want to call it that, was to drill all of the bolt holes in the tops of the timbers. Even without nut bolt washer castings in them, once stained it would add a subtle suggestion of greater detail without actually having to pull it off. Getting this crossing in place was critical to the rest of the scenery because I needed to pave the street first, and paving is a lot easier when you don't have to put pavement guides in between the rails. I just paved up to the crossing on either side and called it a day. With the paving in place, I began adding scenery in both directions from this area, some of which included fixing another early screw-up with the static grass guy. This one was a bit trickier, but I was able to make it happen and smooth out what would have been a pretty jarring transition between two modules. I also got most of the smaller Atlas Metals module covered, and I'm pretty pleased with the results. I was able to give the sidings a junkier look by putting black cinder ballast down first, and then putting the dirt layer on top of this. Once I started smoothing and shaping the ballast, it blended the two somewhat and gave the track kind of a random haphazard look. The CNS mains were a little more well groomed, although I tried to add some weed growth there as well. These tracks were pretty underdressed back in the 60s and 70s, so even the use of roadbed under these might have been overdoing it. 
Nevertheless, I like the contrast in height and consistency from these to the secondary tracks. The ballast color here is based on some photos of nearby parts of these lines in the 60s, and it seemed pretty fine, so I mixed a similar color of sifted dirt into the ballast just to stretch it and make it seem more like leftover gravel instead of neatly manicured crushed granite. I still think it looks a little too clean, so I'll probably go back and add more weeds and litter until it looks as dejected as tracks tended to look back then. The way I see it, this is supposed to look gritty and industrial and come from a time uh, before the EPA existed. So with all of that in place, I got onto a scenery kick and headed towards other areas of the layout, and I'll get into that next time. See you then.